feel like he, he's highlighting something and uh, I don't want to pass by it. I don't want to pass by it. And um, I want to give you context what I see happening in the room and it, it's in the Bible. I want to frame something for you because I think I'm going to frame what many of you are feeling. Um, you can be seated. That's cool. And you guys keep playing, please. Uh, we're going we're gonna to hop into... Can you just turn the lights up a tad bit? That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, there is an overflow room next door. You, you literally get the overflow. It's amazing. <laughs> In John 12, Jesus, Jesus would go, um, this, was, this was a few days after, um, he, he rode into town on the donkey. In fact, John 12 talks about Palm Sunday, and uh, he found the young donkey, and he came in in John 12. But, but in verse 27, it, it, it shows you what Jesus the King, Hosanna, was going through as he's riding in on the donkey, and they're laying the palms down. In, in verse 27, this is so, so important to see. Um, Jesus makes this statement about his soul. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Everyone say your mind, your will, and your emotions. So it's, it's kind of your central processing unit to your being, your body, soul, and spirit, but your soul processes what's happening to you. And, and something was happening to Jesus, and he was processing what was happening in his mind, in his will, and his emotions. And he describes what's going on internally. And this is what he says. He says, now my soul, John 12, 27. It says, now my soul. Everyone say soul. Now my soul has become troubled. So Jesus, that word trouble means stirred, agitated, because of what he was facing. Internally, it's stirring his heart. And so he makes this statement, and it's really important. It's really important to see how Jesus processed trouble because he would say this. He would say in John 14, verse 1, he would say, he would say don't let your heart be troubled. So he would actually tell them, don't let your heart be troubled. Yet we see here... He's being troubled. The point, though, is that, is that don't let trouble overcome your soul. And what Jesus does in this moment is so crucial for us to see when our soul is troubled. And what I hear through intercession and worship and what the Holy Spirit's highlighting is, is he really wants to deal with things that are troubling your soul, and he wants to set you free from it internally. And look at this. And, and, and it says, now my soul has become troubled. So there's two options. He has two options here in verse 27 when facing trouble. The first option is, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. What does that word save? It's sozo. It means rescue, deliver, heal. Now, we love sozo. We love the now sozo. Like, if you need healing, stand up. We're going to pray. And sozo, this is the day of salvation, right? We love that. We believe that. We're for that. But the reality is it's a now and not yet. The reality is sometimes you pray that prayer in faith, the Lord does something, but, but you walk in faith knowing that he met you, but you, it's a process to that promise. And many of you are in process, and process is okay. I hate that word. <laughs> but we're all in it, yes? We're all in it. We're all being transformed from glory to glory. We're all being transformed into his likeness. So we're all in process, but some of us, when we're facing trouble, we cry out, Lord, save us. And he hears our prayer and he actually answers our prayer, but it's not oftentimes like we think he should. And so we think something's wrong. Well, you showed up to that person this way, but you didn't do it in me. And so we're facing that trouble and we're praying that prayer. And so a lot of things creep into our soul because he didn't save us from that hour. Yet Jesus says something else. Look at this. What shall I say? Save me from this hour, question mark. But Jesus says this. He says, but for this purpose, I came to this hour. So, so listen, 
instead of stepping away from the hour and asking Jesus to save him from what he was going through, what Jesus does is he positions his soul and he says, no, 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 no. There's purpose in this. And he actually steps into it. And I think a lot of us spend a lot of time trying to get away from something that the Lord wants us to step into. But how do we step into, how do we step into the trouble? How do we step into what we're facing? Jesus shows us. He shows us in the next prayer. He, he looks up to heaven and he declares something to his father who led him to this hour. And he says this, he says, he says, Father, glorify your name. Oh, the name of Jesus, in essence, he starts singing. He looks up and he says, Father, glorify your name. Meaning, meaning this trouble is unto, the purpose of it is to bring glory to your name. This, this is bigger than me. Your life is not about you. Your life is bigger than you. <laughs> and that, there's something about knowing that, man, something bigger is going on and you're going to use this to glorify your name. And listen, heaven responds to him. It's amazing what, 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 what the Father says. So as he steps into it, he says, glorify your name. And it says, then a voice came forth from heaven. So heaven saw, heaven's looking, heaven knows what the soul of Jesus is processing. He brings that before heaven and the Father who's in heaven. And he says, Father, take this. May this trouble be be a, a pivot for me. May it be something that I actually find leverage in and I declare glorify your name. I'm coming above it and I'm bringing to you and heaven responds to the son, to the son, heaven responds to him and heaven's response is this. This is heaven's perspective of trouble. This is such an amazing reality that we all can live from. Heaven's perspective of Jesus' trouble is this. He says, he says, Father, glorify your name. And then the Father from heaven unifies his heart with the Son in the trouble that he's going through. And he says, I have glorified it and I'll glorify it again. M meaning, meaning from my perspective, I see glory to glory. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Glory. To glory. I've glorified it and I'll glorify it again and I'll glorify it again and I'll glorify it again. Meaning the things that you're facing, I'm going to use to bring again my glory to the earth. And there's something about, listen, there's deliverance in this. There's deliverance for your soul because you can anchor yourself in the name and power and strength and might of his glory. It lifts you above what you're going through. It renews your mind. It brings alignment like it does so much to your heart. Although externally, things may not change. Internally, troubles dealt with because the glory and supremacy and weight and kabod and, and just reality of who he is for me and in me begins to transform me. And then you become thankful for the trouble. You're like, oh God, I'm so glad I went through that. And I've said this before, like we go from glory to glory to glory, but sometimes it seems like that too, although it's a really, really small word, it seems like it has a lot of O's. <laughs> it's like glory to glory, <laughs> right? Right? But listen. It's in the two, it's in that two that, that faith arises and you begin to know the nature. You begin to not walk by sight. You begin to see into the eternal, into the reality of who he is for you beyond what's happening to you. And when you get above that, oh my gosh, it's like the world goes, how does he, how does she face that that way how are they walking through that trial with hope how are they getting joy how are they walking in life how are they not down how are they not discouraged how are they not bitter and, and critical and cynical why is life coming forth from them 
Well, it's because, it's because we've learned to position ourselves before Him, no matter what we're facing. Because in our weakness, He's strong. Let the weak say, I'm strong. But we don't boast in our strength. We boast in the Lord in light of what we're going through. Oh, you're my source. You're my hope. And you're going to bring glory to your name. I, 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 just spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I'm, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. If, if you don't know the end yet, the end is unto his glory covering the earth as the waters cover the sea. <laughs> so, and what that means, what that means is that one day there will be no confusion as to who our God is. The weighty kabod glory of his goodness, of his compassions, of his mercy, of his throne, of his rulership, of his reign. Who he is will not be questioned. There will not be confusion. There will not be doubt. There will not be cynicism. There will not be this jaded, postmodern relative. Oh my God, your God's your God and my God's my God. There will be one God and we will see that his name is Jesus and he is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He's mighty and supreme.